Let's go to 2 Corinthians. That's right past 1 Corinthians. It's not a church split, it's a different letter. Everybody's been talking about the scripture. Let me talk a little bit about it. What are you saying? I'm saying rejoice in the thought of, of restoration. The future is your reservoir of gladness. You have something that can't be seen to change things that are seen. See, things which are not seen turn things into things that are seen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, you know what I'm about ready to read, is verse 18. Paul writing to the church at Corinth, he says, while we look not at the things which are seen. Everybody sees the stuff. Everybody does. But at the things which are not seen. Now what's not seen? Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is. It didn't say is faith now. Now let's go over to the stuff we can't see. Now faith is the substance, Hebrews 11, 1, of the things hoped for, earnestly expected, the evidence of things not seen. So the not seen stuff, now the devil don't use faith. He can't use faith because he's not a faith devil. He's a flesh devil. He can't tempt you in the spirit. He don't have no spiritual work. He's dead. That's why he tempts you in the flesh. Notice he doesn't tempt you in the spirit. He tempts you in the flesh. That's all he's got. If you crucify your flesh daily, not Sunday, daily, you got him defeated all the days of your life on this earth. If you're walking around as a dead man, glory to God, the devil tries everything he knows to do. He can't do nothing. He's not a faith devil. He can't see it. He said, they're using faith, but I can't see it. I can't see it. Where is it? That's why he told... He Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand something about Satan. The boy is on the limits of retardation. <laughs> he really is. Because everything he will ask you to do, he don't know really who you are. He can't look at your spirit because it's too bright. It's got the glory of God in it. He's a dead individual. So he asks you to do things. He told that to Jesus. Listen, he, I, he ought to know Jesus if you be the son of God. If. Do something. I know, I get him to do this. Turn them stones into bread. If he does that, he's God. But Jesus said, no, or no. Why? Because he's using stuff that couldn't be seen to defeat stuff that could be seen. Isn't that something? So if you always walk in faith and live through faith, you'll walk right past the devil and he won't even know you're there. Because faith is all around you. The evidence of it is not seen. He can't see through unseen stuff. He can shoot a dart and hit a faith shield, but he don't know what's behind it. That's why we need to keep the whole armor of God on. Now, don't walk around and say, no, no, no. It's not God. See, he thinks you're God. I've heard Brother Copeland say that years ago. In the he said, if you put the whole armor of God on and walk out, the devil doesn't know it's you. He thinks you're God. Until you're foolish enough to take the hat off and say, no, no, it's not God. It's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And beat your brains out. So, you know, you just keep your helmet on, bless God. He don't know who you are. Because you use stuff that he can't see to change things that you do see. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, are temporary, are subject to change, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Stop. Things which are not seen are eternal. Stop. Things which are not seen are eternal. Stop. You mean to tell me my faith is eternal? Yeah. Evidence of it's not seen. Is it eternal? It's, yeah, it's eternally secure. Ooh. Well, how do I hide it from the devil? Clothe it with the stuff he can't see. Don't never rip off. Don't never put your shield of faith down. Put it up where he can't see because once that shield of faith's in front of you, all he sees is something unseen. It's kind of like, like Star Trek and the Cleons. What do you say it? The Cleons had a cloaking device. Now, don't look at me weird. I know we got a bunch of Trekkies out here. <laughs> How many of y'all are a Trekkie? Hold your hand up. Look at the Trekkies, man. Most of the preachers are Trekkies. <laughs> they said, cloak it. And they knew there was something out there because the space wasn't exactly correct. But see, they couldn't see through the unseen. Then uncloak and blow the boy away. Pretty simple, isn't it? What do you say it? It ain't over. Till it's over. Now notice what it said there. Go back to Micah real quick and, and keep yourself there in Corinthians, but go back to Micah and I want to read that again. It's right before Nahum. 
Say, where's Nahum? Somewhere between Obadiah, Zephaniah, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Micah chapter 7, verse 7, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Now this was wrote in the old covenant. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. That means the devil's going to fight, but you shall arise. Why did we fall down? Chances are we took our armor off. Chances are we laid our faith shield down and tried to fight the devil in our own ego. Fight the devil in our own religious experiences. Fight the devil in our own family experiences. Because you know, Momo was a, was a Pentecostal. Momo's dogs were Pentecostals. Mama was a Pentecostal. Bless God, now I'm a Pentecostal. But just because you have that heritage of Pentecost, you better get some Pentecost in you. Because one day, Momo won't be there. Momo's dogs won't be there. And your mama won't be there. It's going to be you and God and the devil. You say you think God will do it? God is way more concerned with your welfare than you are. That's why he wrote the Bible. The Bible's a welfare book. <laughs> Let me say that again. Y'all missed that. I, I said, let's don't get too smart for him, God. Okay. <laughs> the Bible is a welfare book. It all has to do with your welfare. Everything is wrote for you. Notice that. You sick? By his stripes you were. You hungry? Ask anything to the Lord. Not something, anything. It's a welfare book. Now, the church has preached it as what we call natural welfare. Called barely getting by. But if you understand God's welfare system, you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. You're not able to con conceive, much less even receive all the things God has for you. That's total, complete. In other words, you own it all. See, everything the Bible has to do has to do with your welfare everything from beginning to end and not only you but even your seed that's not even born yet you got the promise of your family down to a thousand generations so go forth that far in advance and that welfare is working for you isn't that amazing that's how I got saved it was through mama believing that the welfare system of God would work for me and that promise came to pass so she rejoiced in the thought of restoration. She knew that the future would be a reservoir of gladness, and it was. And how did she do it? She used stuff that I couldn't see to change things that I could see. Mama began to pray that I would not enjoy sin as much. I, would, I enjoyed sin. I enjoyed drinking. You heard Brother Copeland earlier talking about people on drugs flying. Every time I'd get high as a kite, I'd, talk, I'd tell people about God and myself. I'd say, hey, man, we're going to hell, man. <laughs> Whoa, man. And my drummer said, hey, man, don't talk. Let's just look at the colors. <laughs> man, we were so lowered and never left the house. Ooh. But it would come out. We'd have some of the greatest theological debates and arguments when we was all smoked and dope, snorting cane, shooting crystal, you name it, we did it putting PCP on popcorn. <sighs> Don't look at me weird. Some of y'all are hiding. You used to do it yourself. But you see, to me, that what drugs said it would do, it would do. It got me high. But when I went to church and they told me that God, that God would do this, it never happened the way they said. So I thought that they was fooling themselves. You see, I had a form of religion. I did not have Jesus. But mama kept saying, and Kathy kept saying, it ain't over till it's over. I'd get on the phone, and Kathy, both of them would tell me, whether you like it or not, you're getting saved. What they were saying was, you may have caused us to fall through your sin, but we shall arise. And every time they arose, they got bigger than it was when they fell. You see, what are you saying? It ain't over till it's over. All you got to do is stand and believe God's word. When you stand and believe God's word, God's word stands up and believes for you. Now, notice this verse in verse in Micah 7. I, 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 I saw this the other day and, and I just wrote this down. In verse 7, therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. Now watch this. It says, my God will hear me. You notice that's not a question. It's not a question, will God hear you? It is a statement. My God will hear me. That is the problem of Christians and the church as a whole. They've changed the statement to a question. Will God hear me? Will God 
heal me. This is what God says. I have healed you. By my stripes ye were healed. No question about it. Statement. But the church religious world has changed the statement of Micah 7 into a question. Will God hear me? Why would y'all even say that? Notice what they said. My God will hear me. So they went, you need to stick with the Bible and don't change statements to questions. And that's what the church world has done for centuries. Will God, if it be thy will. It's always a question. My, let me tell you something about God. Everything in God's word is written for you. You don't have to question it, just believe it. So it's not a question, will God hear me? It is a statement, my God will hear me. Notice it's personal. My God means or signifies knowledge and acquaintance. You're getting personal. My God will supply all my need according to his riches and glory. So my God signifies knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge that God will do. Acquaintance, personal, personal relationship. Not will God hear me. My God will hear me. And there's been times I tell you the devil's fought me and I, and I never said, will you hear me, God? I said, my God will hear me. My God's not named Buddha. My God's named King of Kings. My God's not named Muhammad. My God named Rosa Sherrod, Lily of the Valley, bright morning star, bright and morning star, Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, my God. You understand? It's not a shot in the dark, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a question, will God hear me? It's a statement. My God will hear me. And that's what makes religious people mad. Who do you think you are? How much time do you have? I got all day. Go get your Bible. And go from Genesis to Revelation. My God, you'll find my God is your God. My God means what? Signifies what? Knowledge. Signifies acquaintance. You see, instead of saying, will God. Notice what these people said. My God will hear me. Now, then they said, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Even before they said that, they said, my God will hear me. My God will hear me. My God, not will God heal me. Will, will God do this? Will, I, you know, he will. That's his word. But suppose it don't work. The suppose it don't work syndrome never gets in your life. You now have got knowledge and acquaintance. My God will. It ain't over till it's over. Now the devil's coming at you with everything he's got. All you keep saying is, my God will. It's not confession. It's beyond the realm of confession. It's knowing. It's possession. That's what Abraham. I consider not. I stagger not. I'm fully persuaded. Now, how could he say that? Knowledge and acquaintance. That's how he could say that. He knew God. He, knew, he didn't just believe in God. He knew God. He walked with God. You got to walk with God to get God's attention. My God, not will God. If you walk the avenue of religion, you will miss the temple of God. You will miss where God resides. You got to get out of religion and get into personal relationship into acquaintance, into knowledge of who he is, my God will hear me. When I first went on television, I never forget, I had my, when the Lord spoke to me in 1978, I never forget, I didn't have enough money to buy a donut, bless God, much less think about going on television. I couldn't even think of radio, much less television, but I never forget, the Lord said, said, I shall put you on television. You will go, I said, you, you don't know how much television costs. He said, I know exactly how much it costs and I can afford it. Well, my faith was nowhere near that, see, because I did not have acquaintance and knowledge in that point. So I went out on radio. I don't forget it. At 15 minutes a day, I had a very successful radio show. It was a blessing. I was right before Shambach. I warmed the old boy up. Bless God, I'd say. All right, brother, Shambach's coming on in 15 minutes. But right before you hear him, you're going to hear this Cajun preacher. All right. And people would write and say, is Shambach black? And is Shambach that boy, Jesse, is that his nephew? I used to get letters like that all the time. <laughs> Glory to God. And I went on, and I mean, you talk about a step of faith to go out. And, but I would, I would tell people, I'm God on television. They say, oh, no, 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 no. You think God will heal you? I said, no, no, my God will heal me. It won't work. It won't work. Well, in the natural, it, sure, it certainly didn't work. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And the devil said, look at your bank account. I said, it ain't over till it's over. 
I'm not denying there ain't no money in there. I'm denying it's right to stay empty. I'm calling your money, devil, into my account. I'm calling your money into my account. Your money is my money, you thief. Boy, that make him nervous. He leaves for a while when you do that kind of stuff. Hello, everybody. I'm Jesse DePlantis, and I'm so happy you're watching this video today. If you're enjoying our channel, please subscribe. You can hit the bell to get notifications as each new video is posted so you don't miss a single one. Then you share this video to your friends, your family, so they can be blessed by it. And I mean, as I said, they'll be funny, they'll be hilarious, and I promise you, if you watch it, by the end of it, you're going to feel good because I believe in bringing joy into people's lives. I mean that sincerely. And I tell people, say, does anything ever wipe that smile off your face? No. And thank God I got good teeth. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So watch it and subscribe today. Thank you. And keep watching. You'll be blessed. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.